guys, how are you? I'm here to talk to you about oxalates. Hot topic for a hot day. So I want to talk about this because there was a post on the Carnivore Cringes page from, of course, people talking about how the oxalates are bad for you, they're going to kill you. Uh, just like phytate, right? They are out there to kill you. And I did post something about phytate um, when I did the sprouting post. So if you want to learn more about it, that's a very good short one. Otherwise, here we're going to talk about oxalates. Now, oxalates are compounds that um, are we can absorb from our food or that our body makes as waste. Uh, oxalates can create or are associated to kidney stones because the majority of kidney stones that have been found are calcium oxalate kidney stones. So uh, the, the, the carnivore movement will always blame the greens for giving people kidney stones. But there are so many factors to take into, the, into consideration when we, look about, when we look at kidney stones that I think it's really poor judgment to blame the greens, right? Um, so for one, I think uh, the pH of our body is very, very important, especially in the kidneys. And we know from studies that uh, an animal-based diet actually increases the pH or decreases the pH, so makes it more acidic in the kidneys, um, which contributes to things such as stones. A cl like a green diet, a, a diet of vegetables, uh, void of animal products, I, sh I should just say, vegetables and fruit actually increases the pH by making it more alkaline and the kidneys are healthier. And this is a very systematic approach. We know that um, we have to look at the body as in terms of acidity and alkalinity. Um, acidity is burning and so it will hurt. Now, of course, there is extreme alkalinity. Uh, we're basically you're talking ammonia kind of pH that's also going to hurt the body. And in that case, of course, you know, it's not about just alkaline and, and acidity, but there are only two sides of chemistry, as Dr. Morse says. So um, we are tending to be much more acidic than extreme alkaline or even alkaline, really, as a society, because we eat a very acidic diet. So when it comes to oxalates, that's one factor. And the other factor is very important to understand is that the amount of oxalates you get from your food it's actually not that big if you're not a super absorber. Now, a super absorber would be um, someone that is genetically uh, predisposed to absorb a lot of oxalates from the food, which means if you have a spinach, a cup of spinach of, uh, let's just say raw, um, you are going to have uh, 656 milligrams of, um, of oxalates that you're going to absorb most of it. That's a lot of oxalates, but the general person doesn't get a, a, a big amount at all. Moreover, again, you would have to have a big amount, a big, a large quantity of these vegetables. Although it's worth mentioning that spinach um, does actually have quite a lot per cup, so it's very easy to, to do more than other vegetables. And the higher oxalate vegetables we talk about generally are beets uh, with spinach, beets and the chard. And then um, those are the ones that really you want to stay away from if you are genetically predisposed to, um, to kidney stones. So obviously it's a little bit tough to actually understand who is predisposed to them or not. It's not a high percentage of people. Again, they would eat greens and get um, kidney stones. It's mostly people that are on very acidic diets. But also they did a study where they looked at people that didn't have any greens and just were on animal products. And actually they too, if not more, had a, more predispos a higher predisposition of getting uh, kidney stones. That's also because the body actually creates the oxalates as a waste product. So we are going to absorb what we create a lot easier than what we take in from our dietary, um, our dietary means, so from food. So it's really important to understand this kind of dynamics because again, like everything on social media and everything, especially in the carnivore seems, it's a sweet statement that encompasses a big hoo-ha and everybody freaks out about it. Now, a lot of people, and I'm looking down because I have notes of what the points I wanna make sure I'm talking about. Um, actually, I made a point here that people that talk about eating animal products versus uh, eating vegetables because of oxalates don't ever mention actually you can have tuna fish and just a portion and your oxalates intake goes up by 250 percent that's a very high amount but also i've seen people mention kale it's so bad for you because of the oxalates 
kale literally has so little oxalates that you know again even in comparison like in comparison to chard spinach and beets nothing like go ahead and enjoy like you would have to have over 200 cups of, of kale basically to like be worried who's gonna have that really um so i think it's very important again to do your research and look at these things because yeah sure it makes for a great headline to say greens give you kidney stones but it's not necessarily true and definitely not with the variable that we have to consider one other thing that i really wanted to mention here is an example that the carnivore uh, group always uh, and not just carnivore i should say carnivore uh, keto paleo you know all these guys the, the the one thing that these camps always bring up is that there was a woman that was on a on a fast uh, on a feast i should say i, I don't remember now if it's a juicing or um or smoothie cleanse for green you know green smoothies and juices uh for a week or two and she had kidney shutdown i think it was a week um she had total kidney shutdown and so of course these these camps are blaming the oxalates it really is important to say this um she had gastric bypass Gastric bypass is a band that you put into your stomach when you're obese, clinically obese, so that you can eat less and lose weight. Um, that alone as a procedure is quite invasive and of course uh, it actually increases the absorption of oxalates by the body. So that's one factor. And the other thing is if you put a gastric bypass, you have to take antibiotics for an extended period of time to avoid infection because it's a big operation and she was on that. So she basically destroyed her microbiome and we know microbiome the microbiome is so important even to regulate the absorption of oxalates we have the oxalobacter uh, bacteria which actually eats oxalates so without that bacteria into your gut your amounts of oxalates that you're going to absorb into the blood is going up and it's going to go into the kidneys and so on so this is really important to understand because again, those things, those details are not mentioned by these camps and so everything looks black and white and it's really not fair to the veg and to, to our health. Because again, as I mentioned, when they actually did the study, uh, studies and looked at people that were consuming vegetable versus people that were not and were on a meat-based diet, they didn't have less risk of getting um, kidney stones. They actually had higher risks of getting kidney stones. So. We have to look at every single aspect of this um, dynamic to understand the body is really not black and white. The body is not just that and that. The body is a complex reaction of different chemistry. And you have to understand how things work and also understand that we have a predisposition, we have a baseline and we, can, we all have different. So we all can have these movements within that baseline, but we Obviously, we can't just know. It's not a rule for all. There's not one rule fits all. We have to see if you are genetically predispositioned to something, that something will affect you more than another person that is not clear, right? But you're not going to know that very easily. And so people know that when they, you know, maybe get kidney stones. But I think, again, in the medical community, the first thing they tell you is avoid greens, right? Just don't eat these greens. And that actually, they say don't eat greens in general, which is a fallacy because, again, Kale has no much, not not at all, uh, an amount of oxalates to even worry somebody with the genetic predisposition. So avoid the three, right? Avoid the beets and and the, and the spinach and the chard. Spinach is actually a funny one too because it's a very stingy calcium giver because the oxalates bind to calcium. So spinach is not even a good um, giver of, of or source of uh, of calcium versus you know other greens and uh, fortified milks, for example, like soy. So, of course, again, things to, to think about because, uh, you know, even us vegans can be like, oh, we get calcium everywhere, just eat spinach. Spinach is not a good one. <laughs> so, uh, for that, just a little note on the side to make sure we're all on the same page. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it's really, you know, things that we have to take into consideration. And the other thing that I actually saw is another case where a man was having also green smoothies and um, he had kidney shutdown. Unfortunately for him, it was irreversible. So he probably had kidneys, kidneys uh, weakness before and he just pushed himself over the edge, but it wasn't the actual greens that did that. It wasn't the oxalates or per se. What this man was taking was vitamin C on top of having a very rich vitamin C intake from the ve vegetables. 
and that vitamin C actually increases the absorption of oxalates. Um, and so, again, it's really important to understand these things because what else are we doing? And, you know, people are like, oh, vitamin C are water soluble, so we can just supplement it. Look, if you have a diet that is really rich in, um, in fruit and vegetables, and I mean rich by it's at least 95% of your diet, you don't have to supplement vitamin C. Right, and I know uh, my my mentor actually in uh, nutrition school really thinks that we should because of the uh, levels of um, that we need to intake as um, well levels that are really high for I guess it's for healing people. So we're talking about um, therapeutic range, but therapeutic range um, is not forever, and definitely not if you are on a diet that is very rich in that compound you know already i think it's really important to actually understand levels so i really like to take to test everything i'm going to supplement for my clients because just giving a supplement to me is reckless because if you don't need it don't take it you know food 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 so um that part i really think it's it's important to actually mention so this man did have that problem he was taking vitamin c on top of a very high vitamin vitamin c intake from the vegetables which obviously caused uh, for him to have a higher absorption of oxalates and kidney issues that was, he, he went into, he had to basically have a transplant. That's huge, right? Now, and again, I don't think that that was the, just it. I think there was much more to do with it. Then I heard other influencers, even in the plant-based world, that are like, do not take things like shaga, it's really bad for you. Okay, shaga powder is very high in oxalates, but you literally have to take like six spoons a day. Now, any practitioner in there and, and any nutritionist or practitioner, herbalist, naturopath that understands health will never tell you to take more than a teaspoon per day, right? So if you are going to have six tablespoons in your smoothie, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. So you're not to really to overdose on these things. You have to be reckless. Like you can't just have them as a normal person. So I think it's really important to actually talk about this because again, oxalates per se, not bad for you. Oxalates are made by our body when we don't consume them through food and that's actually harder to get rid of and we absorb them more. And if you don't have a predisposition, genetic predisposition to kidney stones, do not worry. If you are worried and you, are not, you don't wanna have the spinach, don't have the spinach. You know what? You're gonna be okay. You can have the other stuff. You can have the kale, you can have any other green really have the, the different kind of salads. I mean, have fun with food. You don't have to worry about it. I hope this clears it out. I really think we need to start a conversation. Look, I, I obviously don't have all the, like I, I haven't shared everything about oxalates. I'm happy to put some studies. You can go out there and check them out yourself and do a bit of, you know, research. Because one thing that is very important is no matter how much I study, I don't know everything. I will never know everything. There's always more to learn. One, two. I always say, whatever I share, research it for yourself because you are responsible for your own health. And also, if you're looking at things when I share them and you learn from investigating, you will remember them more, which means when you're having conversations with people that are trying to antagonize you, you can reply with a very sound mind and with a lot of information. And if you want to know more about oxalates, if you want to know more about well, anything really. Uh, Dr. Gregor has a great website, nutritionfacts.org, and I really feel like that's a great good place to start because he does shorter videos that are very concise, and he has the studies there too, actually. So he's a great guy to look at, I think. And actually, a lot of the things, uh, the studies that I'm going to present, I took from him. So, you know, um, I think it's brilliant that he shares them too. All right, guys, I have, uh, I wish you a great day, and I'll see you soon. Bye.